When you think of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions, you might think of cars and the oil and gas sector. But what do you think about cows? The agriculture industry is responsible for 24% of Canada's total methane emissions. And cows make a significant contribution to those emissions. So do we need to pay more attention to how much meat is in our diets when discussing ways to address climate change? Frank Mitlerner is an air quality specialist and a professor at the University of California, Davis. He has researched the level of methane gases coming from cows. Professor Mitlerner, thank you so much for speaking with us today. I'm hoping you can put this discussion in perspective. How significant a contributor are cows to overall levels of greenhouse gases? Well, it depends on the scale. If you uh, are interested in the global scale, livestock globally makes up about 14%, one four. In a place like Canada or the United States, uh, the number is closer to 2-3% of total uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So when you take a look at that global picture, are you, are you concerned about the impact of cows on the environment? Well, I am concerned that there are many idle animals in the world, uh, particularly in developing countries. The Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change estimates that about 70 to 80% so that's seven zero to eight zero. 70 to 80 percent of global greenhouse gases from livestock occur in developing countries by animals that are not really raised to make food from it. So, for example, in India, where a lot of uh, dairy animals are housed, the second they stop producing milk, they are just cut loose and they walk around without producing anything and they will never be eaten. And cumulatively, that is a huge number of livestock that exists in the world that's not really doing anything to feed people. And that needs to change. So there is a very divisive debate going on where people argue that perhaps to do better for the environment, uh, society, particularly Western society, needs to focus less on animal proteins and move to more environmentally sustainable diets. Where do you land on that, that divisive debate? I don't think that this is actually accurate. Um, even if you look at the most extreme cases, uh, so let's say you were an omnivore and you decide to go vegan for one year. Just to give you an idea of what the reductions of greenhouse gases would amount to, it would be about 0 0.8 tons to go vegan for one year per person. So is that a lot or not? Let's contrast that to, uh, let's say, a transatlantic flight per passenger, amounting to 1.6 tons meaning you have to go vegan for two years to offset one flight per passenger to Europe. So if the entire country were to go meatless Monday, a country like Canada or the United States, it would reduce our carbon footprint by 0.3%. So I think, yes, the discussion is divisive, but not very helpful. Um, you talk about the biggest challenge that you see are these idle animals, animals that are not being used for food. So what suggestions do you have around that debate? What would you like to see happen? You know, in many parts of the developing world, we have very large livestock herds. And the reason is that they are not just kept to produce food. The reason is that they are part of the retirement system, the social security system. So if you want to make sure that you can retire safely, then you need to have a flock of sheep or goats or cattle. That's not a very good idea, okay? It would be much better if they were to have investment vehicles like those that we have, rather than those that belch and produce manure. So idle animals are really uh, something that are a net liability and really no asset. Uh, we can do much better and we have seen how to do it in much of the developed world. Um, how is the livestock industry really responding to these concerns? I think in the most way, um, most livestock sector uh, participants would say, we do have a contribution to the carbon emissions in our country. Um, and we know what they are. They've been quantified, they've been published. Um, and what is it now that we need to do to become climate neutral? Uh, generally, what they need to do is reduce methane. And there are now many studies ongoing to reduce methane, either from animal manure or from belching or from other means. And, um, and we now quantify what those reductions need to be. They need to be around 20, 30% within the next few decades to achieve a point by which the dairy, the beef and other sectors will reach a point of climate neutrality. 
meaning a point by which they no longer affect the climate in any negative way. And that's doable. It is uh, technically feasible and we will get there. Um, I suspect that there's going to be some strong reaction um, from uh, activists who, who are endorsing uh, a vegan lifestyle and a, a plant-based uh, diet lifestyle uh, to, to some of your answers here. You know, you said the argument isn't helpful. Can you just break that down? You know, uh, there is a movement in Canada, in the United States, a very strong one, uh, trying to make the case that in order to do better for the environment, do better and treat animals more humanely, that that is uh, the path to go. Uh, uh, break down why you disagree with that. So first of all, it's not a very strong movement. If you look at the numbers of how many people fall into that uh, food group, you will find that it's a very small group and not a very large group. This very small group is very loud, but we must not mistake that with this being a mass movement. If it were larger than, than 1%, I'd be very surprised. So. Um, there have been studies done that looked into what a move into a complete vegan lifestyle, what that would entail and what it would lead to. Uh, the results were that we would reduce total greenhouse gas emissions by around 2.6%. And another study said, no, it would be more in the 3% range. Contrast that to the emissions from the fossil fuel sector amounting to 80%, 80. What I'm telling you is that this whole, uh, issue around let's go vegan to protect the planet from climate change is a smokescreen and a dangerous one on top of that because it keeps us from discussing what really matters and that is reducing emissions from the fossil fuel sector and that's where you would like to see the conversation focused well if you go to the cop 26 meeting and so on they clearly say that is where it needs to be that's not to say we must not reduce methane emissions from the livestock sector. We must. And my entire focus of my lab is around that, how we use feed additives, how we use manure management and so on to reduce methane at the largest extent possible. So I'm not saying the livestock sector has no contribution, it does. But I'm saying that if we want to reduce uh, food emissions, we need to look at what are the greatest contributors. On the food side, it's by the way, not livestock, it's food waste, 40% of the food we produce in our countries is going to waste. That by far is the greatest contribution of our food sector to greenhouse gas emissions and environmental emissions overall. Professor Mitlerner, thank you very much for your time today. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.